on a similar level, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ What has Allah said here? Allah Ta'ala has given us the example, a very important message that Allah is saying this to us. Obviously, we know that, but Allah Ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you, O oh my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell the people about this message of mine. So this point must be very important, isn't it? That never can it be, Allah says, that khabith and tayyib, in other words, pure and impure, can they be the same? Can they be equivalent? How can it be, Allah Ta'ala asks. They can never be the same. These are two different, distinct things on their own platform. Khabith is khabith and pure is pure. So impure is impure and impurity cannot be mixed with purity. Impurity cannot be mixed with impurity. Both have different conditions. Both have different characteristics. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you can say, separated the whole of humanity, humankind into two parts. Just like the day and the night, night and day are opposite, they are separate, different. The same with the whole of humanity is a message for the whole of humanity. Allah Ta'ala says, I've split you into two groupings, two parts. One is those who are impure, you can say. And those are those who are pure. This is a classification, you can say. Classification. Allah Ta'ala says, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ How can it be? There's no comparison between the bad and the good. Can these both be the same for me? Allah says, can they be equivalent for me? Will my rahmah and fadl and grace and mercy be the same for both characteristics? No. Each will be different. That you cannot mix pure with impure. Allah Ta'ala says in the same way, for me my treatment will be different to the two groupings. Dirty, impure from within, then that person becomes khabith. Extreme impurity, very something we have to focus on. Pay attention. So, close to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala says, Qul, oh my beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qul la yastawil khabithu. How can it be that pure and impure are the same? No, they are different. Due to that person's impurity, that person has become khabith. Khabith, to the extreme situation, that person is impure. And it's not some minor impurity, or the urine has come onto the body, clothes, or excrement, you can go and wash it, and then you're pure. No, this is a severe impurity, Allah Ta'ala says. Khabith. Khabith is severe impurity. And the biggest impurity that uh, get, makes a person khabith is shirk. The action of shirk. Ascribing the partners to Allah, not to believe in Allah, to reject Allah, to follow other um, methodology. So this is the, you can say, extreme of khabith, of impurity. Then the person's birthday, for example, goes towards haram. His khabith actions, bad actions, sinful actions, lossful actions, all our life, Allah Ta'ala says, don't do this, don't do that. We're sat in front of that thing. We don't know about Ramadan or in Ramadan or out of Ramadan. We say, oh, we're forced, I have to do this. If I leave this, then what will happen? What can I do? I cannot do anything. I'm under pressure. And they have a need that they will pass away and that their sins after they die will be eliminated. How can this be? When a person is lowered into the grave, the biggest sin, uh, punishment start. Serpents, snakes and Dangerous creatures, my brothers, Allah Ta'ala's massive ni'mah that we are all sat here today. Massive ni'mah. For example, if dirt or impurity comes into the clothes of somebody and straight away you run out, there's a smell and my feeling, my condition, it feels weird and the person goes to the bathroom and changes clothes as a bath, wants to become pure. And the people who have this habit, they like to stay pure and clean, that they don't like to stay as khabis. They straight away say that the dirt that's inside us, the kharafat, the sins, doesn't matter how much I have to sign away, but I don't want to continue my life as impure. I cannot continue my life as impure, they say to each other. That if you want to be purified from anything, then I'll tell you that where the power comes from to purify. I'll tell you. For example, if I tell you there's dirt on the clothes, and wash them with water. If something else becomes dirty, then wash like this. The Allah Ta'ala says that there is a cleaning agent for everything. For, the, for purity, there's a cleaning agent for purity, for every sin. So the khabasat, Allah Ta'ala, Ta'ala wants to distance the people from the khabasat, from the evil situation. So if I ask myself, how can I improve and change? Then first what I have to do is that the khabasat, the impurity, the dirt that's hidden between the, beneath the lay, 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 layers, then when I pass the test, Allah will say that he is successful. Allah, how do I do this? Allah says, Fattakullah. That this is the sin from within. And you need to purify it from within. Say, subhanallah, subhanallah. That this is a sin that is, belongs to the batin. No external, you can wash it, 
and dust down the clothes and you just pull yourself together and you are forgiven. No. The khabasat from within. And how does that give solution? The solution from within. Allah says the khawf. Allah's khawf should come into you. Bring khawf into your heart. Bring the khawf of Allah, the fear of Allah. Subhanallah. And Allah's Nabi says such a light statement, but tarbiyah for the whole ummah. And addressing Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha, but the message for the whole ummah. And the women folk in here and the men folk in here. And, and the question was put forward that Aisha, if you were to say this, and all of the uh, words that you just stated to, uh, to be put in the, into the ocean, the ocean will become bitter. The Prophet of Allah is telling us there's such a big warning to the previous ummah that you considered sins as low level. And from Aisha, the, 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 Learning that we got from Hazrat Aisha Radhiana is that that phrase was incorrect. All she said was on one instance that this lady, uh, her height is a little bit short or not co- um, consistent. And the Prophet ﷺ said that, Oh Aisha, if you were to place these words or phrase, a sentence on the um, open playing field, on the surface of the ocean, then it would contaminate all of the water of the ocean. But Allah Ta'ala says, if you want, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ That you want to be saved in the akhirah, then don't put any drama behind you, don't trust anybody on any daughter or a child, etc. This Qur'an, that Qur'an. Then Allah Ta'ala says that you will be accounted for your deeds. You will be accounted for your deeds. Straight forward. Your salah will be accounted for. You will be your amal, your deeds, your sins. And nobody can come in between and fail. Allah says, do you understand? It will be you and your body will bear witness to that fact. So today we have time. We are old, we are young, everyone's listening. Today we still have time, we can do tawbah. After tawbah, what should we do? Fattakullah. Then seek the store from where the fear of Allah is attained. That Allah Ta'ala says that do this action, then Allah Ta'ala will have prepared for that action, isn't it? For us to do the action, that's what Allah Ta'ala says. That I've prepared already for these things. First create khawf and fear, and that I'm khabis and I've not forgiven on the end. And when you have that feeling of fear, then do dua to Allah. That Allah tell me that store where I can buy taqwa, I'm gone, I'm going to get taqwa from there. So khawf should come. So when we have this, not drama life. Not to waste of time, that when the reality comes, so when a person travels with this reality, I swear by Allah, his salah won't be a waste, he won't commit haram, and he will not break the hukuk of anybody, he will not break the rights of anybody, and his wife will never complain, and nor will that brother to the left ever complain, everybody will weigh up the situation on the sharia, that's the best way. So it's not just hajj and people who are going umrah and hajj that they'll be forgiven. Or just those who are empty within Allah says, No, I will test the hukub that those people who try to spend their life without the assistance, then there'll be consequences. Now one thing, as I said about Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa, this is the basis that just a light thing, for example, a light action, a good action takes a person from one level to a higher level, much higher level. So my brothers, these are important points. And for this we have one learning that close to the friend of Allah, we should be, try to have a connection, and we should do dua that Allah have a sincere heart, and a person should take tarbiyah from the friend of Allah, the wali of Allah, and continue to do the dhikr that has been given to you prescribed. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu taqullah wa kunu ma aswadikeen. Allah Ta'ala says, Subhanallah, you go to my Allah, friend of Allah, the gathering, and you follow the guidance and trust with that person, and as soon as you finish the training, you carry on doing that. doesn't matter how much hardship you have to bear, and we stand, Allah Ta'ala promises, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ You will get success upon success, Allah Ta'ala says.